Hey guys, Chief Williams Unfiltered. Today I want to talk about why I think it should be illegal for people to be married under the age of 25. And here's the thing. You don't know what the hell you're doing if you're under 25. There's occasions where people have lasted, marriages have lasted, but I only know one couple personally that got married under 25 and they're still together today. Um, most people that I know they're on their second or third marriage, or they still divorced, or they still bitter, and everybody has their own background story. But let's look at the car insurance industry. Why is it that the car insurance industry charges you outrageous prices between ages 18 and 25? Because they know that you're immature, you make stupid ass decisions. You can't even rent a car until you're over 25. The problem is, in my opinion, Girls grow up playing with dolls and they have the Ken dolls and the Barbie dolls. The first toy that they have is a baby doll. So girls are instinctually taught to nurture and care for another child. So now that they're older, they have the resources and the means to actually make that a reality. Boys, we play with cars, boats, and motorcycles. And when we get older, we have the resources to make that a reality. The problem, in my opinion, is Hollywood has us, gives us this false sense of what love is and you can fall in love with anybody, whether it's a virgin or a hoe off the street. Look at the movie Pretty Woman. That don't even make any damn sense. You just do fell in love with a prostitute and he wanted a wifer. And you got celebrities that are wife in these Instagram models that are all nurses. What kind of nurse are you? You IG model, what kind of nurse are you? These people, what that doesn't make sense. And then you want to be a hero, and I, I get it. Everybody, who doesn't like a hero? I mean, we're all as boys. We're taught to be heroes to, to save people, and trust me, uh, I understand. But now heroes don't have to be just men. Just men. Look at J Lo and Britney Spears. They married two broke ass dudes, and those marriages didn't last because the guy wasn't bringing anything to the table. But what happens is once you leave home, whether you go work at a hot dog factory and, or you join the military or go to college, you don't have, if you don't give yourself a, a, a chance to mature as a male or a female and understand how it, what it takes to be independent and learn what you like and what you don't like, then, and you start growing with somebody else that doesn't know what the hell they're doing either, neither of you really can can stabilize yourselves personally uh, as an individual. So what happens is you leave home, you leave mom, you, where you're used to mom telling you what to do, and it's okay with mom telling you what to do because your mom is your mom. She's raising you, she's rearing you. But then if you don't have a buffer between mom telling you what to do and a girlfriend trying to tell you what to do, it, it creates a rift. So you have a rift between the mom saying that this woman's not good enough for you and then the girl saying your mom just be a hater. We love each other. You just need to do what I say and let's you need to block your mom off social media and then you get all of this. This creates this tension and of course a man, you're gonna choose, if you got a woman with you in the bed every night, she gonna win and then your mom is mad then later on down the line, you start having kids and then there's a problem between the kids and the mother-in-law. And because you guys haven't matured, you as an individual haven't given, your, given yourself a chance to grow and learn what it takes to be an independent man. We have all these songs talking about independent women, but we don't have any anything talking about being an independent man. And if you don't give yourself a chance between the ages of 18 and 25 to learn how to be an independent man, to learn how to be alone, to be content with being alone, then it's going to create a problem. We have these mama's boys that never learn how to cook, clean, or iron their clothes. And then they meet a woman that starts catering to them and they think, okay, well, I will let you take that role that my mother provided for me when I was a mama's boy. And then it just perpetuates itself. So in my opinion, uh, resources, no matter if you're making 10 grand a year or 10 million a year, problems are problems. They just, they just escalate. The more money you make, the more problems you have, like Biggie said. But 
it's still the same thing. If, you, if you're dealing with somebody that's compromising you and not complimenting you, then it's always going to be a problem. It's going to be conflict. Statistically, the divorce rate is 50% higher for people that get married under age of 25. And the, the odds for longevity increase as you get older, if you get married as you, if you're old, older than 25. So whether you, when you leave your job, whether you're working at the hot dog factory or join the military or go to college, it really doesn't matter what your career is. But the problem is as an individual, if you start working at that hot dog factory and after four or five years, you realize, you know what? I don't even like making hot dogs. These hot dogs make my clothes stink. I come home, it's in my, the smell is in my hair. I smell hot dogs everywhere I go, even when I'm not at work. And then you want to change paths or change careers. Well, if you're, if you're a single, if you're an individual, you're not impacting anybody else. And as a single person, you should at least have some savings enough to change careers or go find a new trade, learn a new skill, join the military, go to college, whatever. If it's just you by yourself, you can make that change. But if you decide to get married under 25 and you have a spouse that's dependent on you financially, and oftentimes we have a child because, uh-oh, ooh, ooh, I'm pregnant. And, and then you have a child, then you have three people to support and you no longer want to work at the hot dog factory or the bank or wherever, whatever your job career is that you decided to, to take when you left the house and you don't like it anymore. If you're an individual, if you're single, you have way more options than if you're married. And I get it. You, when you leave the house, you start having sex and I'm like, oh, this is the best I ever had. Oh my goodness. This is so good, it must be love. And then we confuse love and sex and think that sex means love and sex doesn't mean love. You can have you can have sex with plenty of people without loving any of them. Or you can love one person and not enjoy the sex. So sex and love are two separate things. So don't let Hollywood convince you that they are the same thing because they are not. So even in college, you could be dating for two years. You're both living in the dorms and you say, you know what, let's get an apartment together. And you live in an apartment for a few months and you're like, you know what, let's get married. So you get married in college. Still, there's no stress because you're staying in an apartment, a college apartment, which the utilities are typically included. It's usually close to campus. So you don't have increased transportation costs. You don't have any real stressors, no real financial stressors. You're both living and going to school in the same location. Problem happens when you graduate. So now one of, one of you is getting a job where you want to go and one of you is not. So then, so that now you have stress between the two of you because now, all right, I got to compromise for either him or her to go to this location that's away from my parents, but close to his parents, get new vehicles. So now you got living expenses, vehicle expenses, you live in a place you don't really like. You no longer have this bubble, this, this planned house that you had when you were in college. You're in a whole new location. And then, uh-oh, guess what? I'm, I'm pregnant. Look at the pee stick. I'm pregnant. So now you got three people you got to take care of. So then you're going to combine all these resources and have all this money. And now one of you is going to have to quit working to take care of the baby for the first few months, at least, or maybe even the first year. Then somebody gets complacent. You know what? Baby uh, sitting costs and child care costs is not worth it. So I'll just stay home. So now you went from all these dreams of having this big house and picket fence and having two fancy cars to living off of one income. Now the sex stops because you're both stressed out. Then you're like, you don't treat me the way you used to. The other one, there's always something. And next thing you know, you're divorced. And so now you're 25, 26, 27 years old, you're divorced. Divorce really doesn't have as much of an impact on a woman. And I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of flack for this, but the woman in most cases is going to get child support and a woman can just get out, get her grind on, go ahead and use her degree to her advantage move home to closer to some family support and get some assistance. And then if the man is the man he's supposed to be, he's going to give you child support to help raise your kid. So now you have another single family, a single mom, just like the, the single mom you're trying to avoid uh, recreating 
in the beginning. So what I'm saying is, uh, please don't, please don't move too soon, move too fast. There's no reason for you guys to get married at under 25 in the military. So this is, this is really, this is a nit and gritty right here in the military. And I get it after basic training, you ain't had sex in five in, in eight to 10 weeks in two months. So you meet somebody in, in school, in AIT, your advanced individual training. So for the military, your advanced individual, individual training is the school that teaches you your, your specific job that you're going to do in the military. And it could be from two months to eight months to a year, depending on what your job is. So then you meet somebody, you ain't had sex in two months. So like, oh, this sex is so good. It's the best I ever had. I'm in love. And in AIT... If you get married, you can move out of the dorm or the barracks. So then you're thinking, okay, well, if we move up, if we get married, we get this extra money. Let's go make that money. And you're thinking, okay, we're going to make some extra money. So let's say, so BAH, basic housing allowance, allowance, basic allowance for housing or BAH is extra money that the military gives you to pay for your housing expenses if you do not live on base. So if you get married, you can move out of the dorm and move into an apartment or a house. But let's say it's $1,000. Now it depends, it varies depending on zip code and your rank. As you go up in rank, you get more money and depending on that cost of living in whatever area. But let's just use $1,000 as a formula. So if you get married, you get $1,000, right? So now, oh, we got extra money, extra money. But if the rent is $900, you got utilities, you have water, uh, electric, and whatever else comes with your utilities, cable, what have you. So now you probably spend another $300 on utilities. So you're spending $1,300, $1,300, which is more than $1,000 that they gave you. So that's just for living expenses. You also have increased transportation costs because you got to get back and forth to base to get to school. So whether you're married to somebody who's not in the military or married to somebody that's in the military, you're still spending all of your housing allowance just to survive. Now, if you have, you have dual military, so people in the military, if you get married to each other, both of you get a percentage of the housing allowance. So instead of just using the $1,000, you're using the whole $2,000 and you're trying to live twice as large. So instead of a one or two bedroom apartment, you decide to get a three or four bedroom. And since you balling out, you might as well go get new cars. Let's go upgrade. I want to drive a new 2018 or 2019. Let's go get it. Let's go get it. So then now you got two car payments. You got bills coming out the ass. Then, uh oh, I'm late. What? What do you mean you're late? Somebody gets pregnant. Well, you know what? Now that I'm pregnant, I don't really like doing this. I don't want to be in the army. Or if you're a civilian, I don't want to work anymore. I'm getting out. I'm quitting. So now, these all these resources you thought you were going to pull together because you are going to make all this extra money is, is cut in half. So you go from dual income to one income with three people. That don't add up. That That's never going to work. So now you got all these stress. You don't treat me the way you used to. Why are you working so hard? And all this other stuff. And then somebody files for divorce. And then same thing. Single parent, one person paying child support. And the cycle continues. So please, 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 please. Young people, you don't know what the hell you want. You don't know what you're doing. Listen to your parents because they are grown. They've been through this. They understand that you don't know what the hell you're doing if you're under 25. Just focus on yourself. Get your life together physically, spiritually, and financially. Once you have that together, then you find somebody that can compliment you, that brings something to the table, that's doing something similar to what you're doing. You guys can build something together, but you can't build anything without a solid foundation. I promise you that. If you don't have a solid foundation, whatever you're trying to put together or build is going to fall apart. This is Chief Williams. I'm out.